Well, hi, this is Custom Works. I'm Clint Allen, and today we're talking about nine reasons why the 7.3 was the most reliable power stroke, is the most reliable diesel in the galaxy. Stick around. What <laughs> 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 are you doing? <laughs> it's to be a well, thanks for sticking around through that. The 7.3 Power Stroke is a widely renowned engine that is known to last over a half a million miles if properly taken care of. But was it the most reliable Power Stroke? Was it the most reliable diesel ever, ever assembled? I think so. I think it's pretty much easily illustrated in what we're going to talk about today. More than a quarter century after the first 7.3 power stroke was produced, you can still find thousands upon thousands upon thousands of 7.3s still working the fields, the highways, construction sites every day. Not to mention the fact that the aftermarket support for the 7.3 Power Stroke, better known as the 444CI V8 from International, is still a buzz in the aftermarket community. And we all know that there's tons and tons of aftermarket goodies that we can put on these bad boys. Sure, they lack a little bit of horsepower. Eh, they lack the torque of modern day, you know, 500 horsepower, 1,000 foot pound behemoths that they're putting out now, but they're not sitting in the shop every other month either. Uh, 7.3s have conservative power ratings combined with its rather simple design, culminated into an engine that is extremely, almost impossible to kill. Below narrows down the nine reasons why the 7.3 is the most durable V8 ever done in the Power Stroke name and in the diesel industry. So, number one! <laughs> Doesn't have enough power to actually hurt itself. Some of you may find that the reason uh, that it's laughable, but if you've ever driven one, you know bone stock that's 7.3 from 94 and a half to 2003 struggles uh, basically to keep up with most modern day uh, diesels. But when the 7.3 debuted in the 1994 model, it was rated at 210 horsepower at 425 foot pounds of torque. Power stroke form the version of the 7.3 liter that the Navstar built for international trucks was coined the T444E and came with different but mild power ratings. While that kind of power matched, eh, did beat all of the Dodges at the time and did blow GM right out of the water, the performance stackings was pretty sad for the day. Zero to 60 in 14 seconds. But robust iron parts, conservative power, low engine speed are the key ingredients of any diesel that's going to last you forever. And the 7.3 liter has gone unmodified been well maintained in its entire lifetime can easily exceed 500,000 miles guaranteed. And in fact, these motors have easily seen over a million of miles. So, number two, <laughs> lack of emission controls. There we go. A big reason why the 7.3 liter power stroke lasts uh, so long boils down to the absence of any emission controls present on the motor. Aside from the use of maybe a catalytic converter downstream in the exhaust, the 7.3 liter's sole means of meeting the emission regulations relied on the engine's computer 
to calibrate to ensure the engine adheres to the NOx standards. <laughs> By comparison, the exhaust gas recirculation systems that had been employed on its successor, the 6.0 liter, and we know the horror stories behind those, but if properly uh, souped up, those can also last a very long time too. Uh, with the 6.0, you know, in comparison, uh, they had all kinds of problems from stuck EGR valves to cracked EGR coolers, cam contaminated oil engine. Uh, it was much harder on coolant than the addition of the, once the addition of the diesel particulate filter, the DPF basically. On top of the EGR on the 6.4 liter, virtually guaranteed you would uh, never see high miles. Matter of fact, they uh, dubbed the 6.4 liter as the 150,000 mile throwaway motor. That's too bad because it could have been one heck of a motor if it went to had all that garbage on it. But number three, complex yet durable fuel injection system. The 7.3 power stroke is extremely reliable if properly remained. The Caterpillar sourced Huey injector system had undergone extensive R&D before CAT leased the technology to Navstar for use on the 7.3 liter as well as the Navstar T444E and DT466E and the I530E models. The Huey system short fire hydraulic actuated electronically controlled unit on the 7.3 revolves around a high pressure oil pump sending oil volume through oil rails integrated into the engine cylinder's head which allows oil to be freed from the top side of each injector. From there the oil pressurizes and acts as an intensifier on the piston compressing the fuel below it and resulting injection as high pressure as high as 21,000 psi into the cylinder. CAT would also make uh, use of the Huey technology on several of its own engines, some of which were the 3126, the C7, and the C9, all of which saw good success and long-term durability. On to the next one, which is number four, long-lasting injectors. The Huey injectors used in the 7.3 Power Stroke, though fairly complicated to the novice, are quite simple in terms of their fuel injection functionality. Single-shot operation means that unlike common rail injectors used today, which can conduct five or more injection events per combustion cylinder, the injectors are prone to wear. Even when split-shot injectors were introduced on the 7.3 and the 97 models for the California years and 99 model year federal uh, engine regulations, a pre-pilot injection event prior to the main event was made possible mechanically so the plunger still could operate once the combustion event properly maintained 7.3 injectors are virtually guaranteed to go well beyond 300,000 miles between overhauls with most lasting even well beyond that and I can attest for that. I am over 500,000 miles on all the units that I have and we have yet to touch the injectors. So on to the next one. So number five, they keep their cool. Even though the early 7.3 power strokes didn't come with an intercooler, the 94 and a half through 97 engines were able to maintain their exhaust gas temperatures relatively well thanks to the conservative horsepower and torque ratings. Beginning in 99, EGT was even more manageable thanks to the addition of an air-to-air -air intercooler, even with aggressive aftermarket tuning in the mix. In fact, 99 through 03 engines came with considerable larger injectors from the factory. It takes a lot of work to get the pyrometer past 1200 degrees Fahrenheit on the 7.3. Equipped super duties in the turbocharged application, a intercooler 
undoubtedly made life easier for both the engine and the turbocharger and things were no different in 99 through 03 in that case. Number six, six bolts per cylinder. Adding to the 7.3 commercial grade attributes is its use of six heads per cylinder, something Navstar got away with from on the 6.0 and the 6.4 power strokes, which we all know blowing head gaskets on those all the time. But Ford reverted back to it on the 6.7 liter in the 2011 models. And untouched or slightly modded 7.3 can go its entire life with zero head gasket issues. Even modified versions will run for years or if not decades without lifting one of the heads and having an experience of a blown head gasket. We know of several 7.3 power strokes making 375 to 400 horsepower, twice the factory amount that survived more than 500,000 miles of heavy towing with being grossly overloaded. Uh, before popping a head gasket, it takes a lot of abuse. So the 7.3 liter head gasket is capable of living uh, of surviving up to about 75 psi of boost believe it or not and that's a lot of boost the failure likely would uh, occur if, even if all while the general acceptance of the threshold for the boost on the 7.3 is rated at only 35 to 40 psi you can get away with an average of 50 psi and never have an issue. So on to the next one which is number seven simple engine design and I just I love this this is just absolutely fantastic virtually nothing is exotic about this motor the block is from cast gray iron the crankshaft is made of forged steel the rods are made of forged steel although some models uh, starting in 01 and then definitely 02 and 03 came with powder coated metal rods and the pistons were cast aluminum the engine loan camshaft resides in traditionally the overhead v8 engine location with the block like the crankcase the cylinder heads were all cast iron and features two valve and two push rods per cylinder Highly forgiving, the hydraulic lifters actuate the intake and the exhaust valves while eliminating the need for any periodic adjustments whatsoever. She is just run her down the road and forget about her. And number eight, fixed geometry turbocharger. Uh, journal bearings turbochargers kept the force induced side of the 7.3 simple as uh, the most uncomplicated of the lot would be the non-wastegated first gen series TP38 charger that graced the 94.5 through 97 en uh, engine. Instead of being equipped with a wastegate, the exhaust side was opened up courtesy of a 1.15 AR turbine housing which helped keep the EG cheese in check as the non-intercooled engine. A wastegate version of the TP38 would be employed on the early 99 models all the way up through 03, giving a much tighter 0.84 AR turbo housing, while the GTP38 model, complete with a larger wastegate and looser 1.0 AR turbo housing, came on all 99.5 through 03 7.3 liter power strokes. In direct comparison, the VGTs that followed would prove just a problematic issue for the 6.0 and 6.4, and eventually the early versions of the 11 and 2014 of the supposedly acclaimed 6.7 power stroke. So next on the list, number nine, externally located oil cooler. And I, I just love this. 
It's no secret that the engine oil and the 7.3 power stroke gets worked really hard. In addition to the 20 to 60 PSI of oil pressure being used in the lubricant of the engine, the oil in the high pressure circuit gets pressurized to more than 3,000 PSI at top throttle. This builds tremendous heat extremely fast and this is why it's just key to make sure that you change your oil. Luckily the externally located oil cooler on the 7.3 liter is up to the task in addition to the location exposing it to cooling effects of the outside air its large internal passageways never plug up. And that's in direct contrast to the oil cooler integration in the lifter valley of the 6.0 and the 6.4 power strokes is constantly exposed to just excessive heat, uh, excessive wear, and features minuscule uh, small internal passageways that are prone to clog and restrict coolant flow to the other parts of the engine and basically causes failure after failure after failure. So there we are and I hope you've learned something today and you take it easy and you have a good day. You're still here yet? It's over. Oh, I know. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button, the little bell, you know, the little bell, and that'll tell you every time I post a new video. Also go root around in my previous videos and you'll find a lot of interesting content. Until then, go home. Oh, oh yeah. The garbage can's over there, you know, don't be making a mess, you know, clean up after yourself. Go, go.